I'm on record as saying type saved my marriage. I'm a German ENFJ and my husband is a Spanish INTP. Understanding our cultural differences and looking at our type profiles side by side helped me realize that he isn't trying to tick me off on purpose, it's just the way his brain is wired. We've been applying psychological type knowledge for over a decade now. It helps us feel more connected, saves time when resolving conflict, and when we're really paying attention, we can even anticipate some issues before they show up. I'm thinking about creating a series of videos where I'll go over the different type combinations and look at the main strengths and opportunities of each pairing. Let me know which one you want to see next. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology, and I'm also certified in the MBTI, Dr. Linda Behrens' integral type, and Dr. Dario Nardi's Neuroscience of Type. Through this channel and in my coaching practice, I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. So let's jump in. Generally speaking, the main areas that determine relationship success or failure are communication styles, conflict styles, emotional connection and trust, mutual support and respect, physical connection and consent, and shared values and goals. There are lots of other little things as well, but those are the main areas. Psychological type differences play a role in communication and conflict styles, and they also inform emotional connection, trust, mutual support, and respect. The other areas of physical connection, consent, shared values, and goals somewhat depend on type in that each type needs different things, for example, when considering opening up a relationship, but those areas are also heavily influenced by cultural upbringing and individual background experiences, so it's a bit more tricky to link them to type and we're not going to cover those here. Looking at the ENFJ and INTP pairing from the type perspective, some differences are immediately obvious. For example, they only have the N in common. However, for the ENFJ, the intuition is introverted and for the INTP, it's extroverted. This is the function that governs how we process information we trust. So for example, when I, the ENFJ, jump straight to the bottom line because my introverted intuition has shown me the most likely outcome to a situation, my husband sees a lot more possibilities and wants evidence before he'll believe what I'm saying. Similarly, when his extroverted intuition is trying to be helpful by giving me loads of ideas, for example, what I could do next in my business, I'm hearing that as a criticism and easily feel overwhelmed with all the potential if he doesn't also give me or if I don't see a clear way forward on how to realize these ideas. I have another video about the intuiting function available here. My communication as an extroverted feeling dominant is also much more centered around stories about people and feelings, something that doesn't always interest him. On the other hand, he loves explaining complex situations and solving mind puzzles where he gets to show off his analytical skills, which, unless they involve people, don't always hold my interest. We've learned to bridge those gaps in many ways. For example, I know to mention someone in context and not just their name so he knows who I'm talking about, and he knows that I have a limit of techie or complex world politics and economics information I can handle before I feel fried. I have another video about the thinking and feeling functions here. In terms of conflict styles, we're both pretty avoidant and like to keep the peace, but as someone with extraversion and feeling preferences, I cannot function until the air is cleared. In the beginning of our relationship, a frequent hurdle was that he would recede and stop talking, which would make me feel like in physical pain, like it was the end of our lives together. Everybody's different, of course, but for people with extroverted feeling in the dominant or auxiliary position, harmony and abiding by what's best for the group is very important. To that end, we often put our needs on the back burner and pretend that we're okay until one tiny thing makes us explode and then we feel even worse about that. So it took me some years to learn that other people have the right to be upset and that's not something I have to fix. I don't have to fix anything. I don't have to give in and say sorry first just so that my partner feels happy with me again. He gets to feel his feelings. He's a grown man, he can be upset and survive it. I just have to take care of my feelings. And over the years, I've learned that sometimes it's better for me to be uncomfortable in the short run, for example, when I stand up for my needs and he needs some time to adjust, than keep pushing things down and grow resentful over time because I'm not sharing what I actually need. So that's not keeping the peace, that's keeping the conflict inside of myself instead of out in the open where we can 
deal with it. For introverted thinking dominance like my husband, conflict is more likely to come up or they're more likely to get annoyed when something doesn't make sense or doesn't seem logical. If that happens, they're likely to need time to process and figure out exactly why the other person's wrong and how to lay out the logical argument. And this can be frustrating for the ENFJ who wants to talk things out sooner rather than later to get out of their own discomfort. So ENFJs need the reassurance that everything is okay and that the relationship isn't threatened. However, if something just feels bad, that's not the kind of information the INTP can work with. So over time, my INTP husband has come to see me as an expert in emotional situations and reading people and understanding personal interactions. So from that perspective, he is now more likely to accept my judgment and opinions. He's also learned that emotions don't always have to make sense. They do, however, always have to be respected. We also got a lot better and postpone heated arguments until he's had time to think about it and I've had time to cool off. I just need to know when we're going to talk about it, but I'm not really afraid or think the whole relationship is in danger anymore. Fights happen and we work it out. Our emotional connection and trust has also built over time, as I think most connections do. But given the differences in our communication and conflict styles, what's been helpful is accepting that we do things differently. Until I learned about personality types and cultural programming, I expected other people to think and feel and talk like me. After watching all the rom-coms, I expected emotional connection to be just a given. It's the active process of practicing self-awareness and realizing that my way is not always the best way or the only way and that other approaches also hold advantages that has helped me not take things so personally anymore. It's really understanding why someone would behave the way they do, what motivates them, what cognitive processes might be at work, which neurotransmitters are probably flooding their system, and that none of that is necessarily done with malicious intent. Learning and living with our partners is a way for us to better know and understand ourselves in the safe environment that also allows us to heal some childhood wounds if we're lucky. So for this ENFJ and INTP, in the beginning there was a soul connection, I would say, in that we knew pretty early on that this was going to be it, we were going to be together, but there wasn't an emotional connection per se, because young INTPs also like to deny even having emotions. Feelings are yuck and unsafe and hey, if the thing your brain can't not do is analyze logically, then yes, feelings and emotions make no sense, better to not even go there. So he kept his cards pretty close to his chest and I think INTPs in general, since they like being competent at things, unless they spend a lot of time practicing dealing with emotions, they might feel uncomfortable plumbing those depths until maybe the inferior extroverted feeling function starts popping up for them in midlife. For ENFJs, our faces are very expressive. We smile and laugh and cry and shout and emote a lot. Even if we're not saying anything, you can probably see how we're feeling because of the facial expressions. And you'll know exactly where you stand. So I had to trust in our connection and that he loved me by paying attention to his actions. I would ask, do you love me? A lot. And he would say, he told me that one time three years ago, so until he forms me otherwise, that information still stands. And now we've been together 18 years, so I guess I wore him down because when I ask him now, he says, yes, he does. Or if I tell him first, then he just has to tell me, me too, and that's it. Circling back to the mutual support and respect, I think once the INTP accepts you as intelligent or maybe even an expert in something, they will respect your opinions. They might still critique what you say or do, but that's how they show support. They want to help you figure it out so it's logically sound. As a young ENFJ, I found it a little more difficult to support some of his plans because he's always had a lot of ideas with little to no execution and I was very reliant on my introverted intuition that I like to jump to conclusions. I'd like to think that I've learned to communicate my doubts in a way that doesn't just shut him down now, but to be honest, my face still speaks for me sometimes. So I ask questions in a way that helps him find holes in his logic, if there are any, which is something he appreciates since he'd be doing the same for me as well. In summary, generally speaking, there are at least three things that make ENFJ and INTP pairings a good match. ENFJs are warm, empathetic, and skilled at understanding and meeting the emotional needs of others. INTPs, on the other hand, are analytical, logical, and excel at problem solving. This combination can lead to a dynamic partnership where the ENFJ provides emotional support and the INTP offers intellectual stimulation and solutions.
Both ENFJs and INTPs have a deep appreciation for intellectual pursuits and stimulating conversations. Both enjoy exploring ideas, theories, and engaging in philosophical discussions. This shared interest can create a strong understanding between them. ENFJs and INTPs definitely contribute to each other's personal growth and development. The ENFJ can help the INTP develop their emotional intelligence and social skills, while the INTP can assist the ENFJ in developing their critical thinking and logical reasoning abilities. Three things that might make ENFJ and INTP pairings challenging. ENFJs tend to be expressive and emotionally oriented, while INTPs often prioritize logical reasoning and can be more reserved. This difference in communication style can lead to misunderstandings and frustration if both partners do not make an effort to understand and adapt to one another. ENFJs are emotionally expressive and seek emotional connection, while INTPs may struggle with recognizing and expressing their own emotions. This disparity can create challenges in meeting each other's emotional needs and lead to the ENFJ feeling unfulfilled, while the INTP might feel overwhelmed by the intensity of it all. ENFJs tend to prefer resolving conflicts through open discussion and finding common ground quickly, while INTPs may retreat to introspection and analysis. This mismatch in conflict resolution styles, with the ENFJ seeking immediate resolution and the INTP needing time and space to process their thoughts, requires effort and understanding from both partners to find a middle ground in resolving conflicts effectively. Let me know which pairing you think I should cover next and check out this video as well. I'll see you there.